Okay, so now that our zombie can chase the player, let's set it up so that when the zombie's close enough to the player, it attacks the player. Okay, so here in our chase player state, we're gonna wanna add in a get distance action, and it's gonna be getting the distance to our player. It's gonna store the result in a new variable. This is a float variable that we can call distance to player. It'll be checked every frame, so it's constantly getting that distance. And then we'll do a float compare, and this will go after the get distance. The float we're gonna be comparing is the one we just got, distance to player. And we'll compare it to something like 0.5. We'll see if we have to adjust this. Uh, this is basically the distance that when the zombie gets that close to the player, that's when they'll start attacking. So that means that the zombie will stop and do a little swiping action and deal some damage to the player. So let's see if 0.5 works. And this will also be running every frame. And so when it's equal, we'll put equal and less than for this. It'll send this next event. So equal and less than, uh, but not greater than. So let's send this next transition off to a new state. Uh, maybe we can put this right here, keep the flow, and we'll have this called attack. Okay, now here in attack, we're gonna do our set agent is stopped, and we'll set him as stopped, and then we'll put in an animated play, and we're gonna make sure that it's zombie models state name. In our animator, we can see that we have this attack animation and it is called attack. So I'm just gonna put it in, spelled the same way, lowercase, lowercase a. Okay, so it's gonna stop them, play the attack animation. And then we're also gonna want a smooth look at. We'll be looking at the player. Let's make it nice and fast so they're constantly looking. Finish tolerance, 0.1. And we're gonna have this same get distance and float compare. So I'm gonna copy and paste these from the previous state. I'm gonna put them here at the end. Except this time we're gonna change this to 2.5 and instead of equal or less than, it's just gonna be greater than. And this will send off next. And next will send back. So that means that it's gonna constantly be getting the distance to the player and if the player is greater than something like 2.5, then the zombie will start chasing them again. So right now, this is just cosmetic, right? It's just the zombie looking like they're gonna be dealing some damage to us. Let's make sure all of that works. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the scene. Okay, I have our zombie selected so we can keep an eye on this thing down here. And let's see, let's get close enough. Looks at us. Okay, waiting, starts chasing us. Okay, but they're never quite getting to that point. And I'm looking at my get distance here and we can see that the result is 1.3. They're currently 1.3 units away from us. If I move away, we can see that that gets further. See that growing when I run far away from them. But it took a minute for them to be able to get that close to us. So what that tells me is that we're gonna have to change this distance to something closer to 1.5. So let's go ahead and stop this. 1.5, and now let's give it a run. Okay, so we're gonna get this hot dog's attention. And hot dog comes and is currently attacking us. Okay, so this is working out. We'll see that if I back away, it starts chasing us again and starts attacking us as soon as they're close again, okay? So that's working out pretty nice, but again, it's all cosmetic. There's not actually any damage being done to our player. So let's get that set up. In the same state attack, at the very top, I'm gonna put a send event, and I'm gonna put it up here, okay? We're gonna be sending it to a game object, FSM. Specify the game object as the player. And the FSM we want to target is one that we haven't made yet, but we'll call it player health. And the event that we'll send will be a new global event that we haven't created yet. And we'll call this one damage. Okay, so I'm gonna copy and paste this string because uh, we don't want spelling errors to break our game. So I'm gonna come over here to player. 
come down, add a new component, new FSM, and I'll paste in that player health. Okay, so this is our new FSM on the player, player health. And in here is where we're gonna set up a state that that zombie FSM can talk to to deal damage to us. So we'll leave this start state here, call it initialize. And then here, this will be the state that we actually get damage done to us. We'll call this one subtract health. And we're gonna give it a global transition, custom events, damage. Okay, so this is the state that's gonna get sent off when that zombie's attacking us. So what'll happen here is we'll create a new variable. It'll be a float, we'll call this player health. And we'll set the value by default to 100. And in this damage state, we'll have a float subtract. And we're gonna be subtracting from that player health, let's say one damage. Okay, so this is how much damage the zombie's gonna to do to us for every hit they land on us. And then we'll have a float compare. I'm gonna put this after it. And we're gonna be comparing that player health to zero. And if it's equal or less than, we'll have a new event just called dead. Add that, equal or less than, dead. And it'll send off to a new state. And this new state will be called dead. And I'm just gonna make this red. There'll be a bunch of stuff that we can add to this dead state, the things that happen when the player dies. But initially, we could just put in some enable FSMs to do something like disable the player movement. Okay, so we can uncheck this box. And what that'll do is it'll prevent the player from being able to move. And I can copy and paste this action and say disable the player crouch. So let's see how that plays out. Okay, I'm gonna come over here. Zombie sees us, comes over and attacks us. Now, the thing is, he's attacking us right now, but he's only done that one damage to us, right? And that's because if we select our zombie, come over here, we can see that he's stuck in this state. It just happens the one time. He, th he lands one hit on us, but he just keeps playing his animation over and over again. So what we could do to make that loop is for every, say, second and a half, we could put in this wait action that says, wait a second and a half. To have a new event, we'll call loop event. And I'm gonna add this transition, and I'm gonna direct this back to itself. Okay, so this just loops. And every second and a half, he lands another hit on us. So now, if we select this player, we should be able to see the zombie landing multiple hits on us, and we should be able to see our health decreasing for each swipe. Okay, this restaurant employee sees us and is now taking swipes at us. And you can see the arrow down here in damage blinking, and that's for each hit that's landed on us. Similarly, you could see the float variable decreasing. Every time he lands on a hit on us, our health goes down. Okay, we could change this, just for this example right now, to something like 10, okay? You can see our health dropping more and more. 56 health left, 46 health left, 36 health left, 26, 16, six, and then boom, we're dead. Okay, and now that we're dead, I'm moving my keys right now, but I can't move. And I'm also trying to press crouch, but I cannot crouch. Okay. I'm also hitting space to jump, can't jump. So that's uh, effectively dead. So this is a good start, but now what we can do is add another enable FSM action. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this. Okay, this one will move to the top. And this one's gonna enable an FSM. And we won't have it reset on exit, but this FSM will be called player death. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this string and in our player, I'm gonna create a new FSM, and I'm gonna paste that string in there, player death. Now let's edit this player death FSM. In here, we can add a camera fade out action. Okay, and this will just take 10 seconds, and when it's done, it'll fire off next, and it'll take us to this next state. We'll call this dying, and then in the second state, this will be dead. Again, I'm just gonna make this red. And when we're here on our dead state, we're gonna have a send event action. 
that will be targeting game object FSM and it'll be targeting the owner's player health and it's gonna send a new global event that we can call lost because the player has lost the game. And we'll set that up in just a second, but while we're here, I'm gonna throw in an enable FSM and I'll put it after this. And this is just going to disable this player death FSM. So this player death FSM will get shut off. This is the end of the road for this FSM. Now in the player health FSM that we're sending this lost event, player health, we're gonna add a new state and we'll call this restart. And this is where we'll get our global transition lost. Okay, and I'll set this color as blue. Now here in the lost state, this is where we're gonna reset everything. So this will take the player back to the starting point, it'll reset their health, it'll kind of just get everything back to square one so the player can try again. The first thing that we'll wanna do is set the health. So we could put in a set float value and the float value that we'll wanna set is the player health. And just to make this easy on ourselves, we can come in to variables and we'll make a new float called default player health. And we'll set the value to 100. And over here in the float value that we're setting, we could set it to the default player health, okay? So the player health is going to be set with that default value of 100. And then what we're gonna to wanna to do is set the player back to their original position. So way we can do that is come up here to our player and right click, create empty. And I'm gonna call this level start position. And I'm gonna take it out of the player and just put it down here. I'm gonna select our player again. Now I'm gonna put in a get position action. And the position we're gonna to wanna to get is from our level start position. We'll store that in a vector. We can call this new variable start position underscore v3. It's a vector three value. And that's in world space. And then we'll have a set position. This will go after that. And we're gonna set our owner, this player, to that start position V3. And let's make sure that this space is in world. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. We're gonna wanna do some extra stuff, but let's see if all of this works now. So just to speed things up a little bit, I'm gonna get this player health damage up to something like 25. So it only takes four hits to kill us. I'm just doing this so we could save some time in this tutorial. Hit play. Okay, and then we have this person in their underwear. Oops. <laughs> okay, so camera just faded out and everything restarted. So that's kind of a good start, but we don't want the camera to fade out from the beginning. And that's because on our player game object, I forgot to disable the player death FSM. So by default, we want this thing off and it only turns on when we die. All right, let's try that one more time. Hitting play. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get their attention. I'm gonna come over here, away from our starting position. Okay, they're gonna come over and they're gonna do some damage to us. Boom. Okay, we're dead. And as you can see, the camera is fading out. And we should restart back at the top. Great. So that's a good start. One of the first things that stands out to me is we want a little bit more dramatic of a death. So I'm gonna do a set parent action. And I'm gonna put this at the top up here in the dead state. And the game object we want to parent will be the player camera. And I'm gonna create a new empty object and we'll call this dead cam and then I'm going to right click on the player camera create empty call this one living cam so this is in the exact same position as the camera is now I'm going to take it out of the camera and I'm going to put the camera in it so now the player camera is a child of the living cam they're in the exact same position so on our player health FSM in this dead state I'm going to tell the player camera when we're dead to get parented to the dead cam instead of the living cam. 
and we'll have it reset local position and reset local rotation. Now that means it's gonna line up to exactly the same position rotation as the dead cam. And by doing that, we can put the camera on the floor and have it in the perfect position to kind of give that helpless look. So just to set it up, I'm gonna put the player cam in the dead cam this time. And you can see over here in the position that I could zero everything out. Okay. So that means it's exactly in the same position and rotation as the dead cam. And now what I'm gonna do is with the dead cam selected, I'm kind of move it down maybe move it forward and then rotate it maybe turn it kind of sideways maybe looking up a little bit more like something like that okay i'm going to take the player camera out put it in the living cam and again i want to zero it out because after all that moving we need it to zero out now to the living cam so now it's lined up with the living cam. So if it ever gets parented to the dead cam and it has all of its position and rotation values reset to line up with the dead cam, it's gonna be that weird on the floor canted look. Okay, and that's what we have this set parent for. Now we're gonna need it to undo that once we're alive again. So I'm gonna copy this set parent action and then in our lost restart, I'll paste it up here at the top. So it puts the camera back to square one, except this time, instead of dead cam, I'm putting in living cam. All right, let's give that a shot. I'm gonna play it. Okay, gonna go start beef with this jock. Come on, dude, hit me. One, two, and three. And now we're dead on the floor. He's attacking us. Camera's fading out. We're dying. It's a cruel, cruel world. And as soon as our vision goes to black, we're back up with our camera fixed and we're back at square one. He ran over to us a lot quicker than it would have preferred. But that's gonna be the next thing we do when we reset where zombies are and reset other values in the world.